opened its 1967 football season in the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas, against Texas A&M. The game was played at night, and the Aggies scored first on a field goal. Trailing by three points, sophomore quarterback Mike Phipps of Purdue hit Bob Balsell with a screen pass good for 35 yards and the Boilermakers' first touchdown. Phipps threw 14 completions out of 29 tries in the first half for 221 yards. This pass in the second quarter is caught by Jim Byrne. Moments later, Phipps passed to Leroy Keyes for 16 yards to set up Purdue's second touchdown. Leroy Keyes completed Purdue's 78-yard drive with a sweep around left end into the Aggie end zone to make it Purdue 14, Texas A&M 3. Late in the second quarter, Purdue completed five straight passes, climaxed by this touchdown toss by Leroy Keyes to win Jim Byrne. At the half, it was Purdue 21, A&M 11. In the fourth quarter, Bob Balzell booted a 20-yard field goal to put Purdue ahead 24 to 14. The Aggies struck back on the next scrimmage play as quarterback Ed Hargett lofted a long scoring pass to end Bob Long for the final score of the game. Purdue won 24 to 20. Against Hoosier rival Notre Dame, the nation's number one team at the time, the Boilermakers took the field between a long corridor of cord-wearing seniors who made an archway of their senior canes. Purdue won the coin toss, and the Boilermakers proceeded to march 67 yards in seven plays for the first score. Here, Jim Byrne picks up 40 yards on a pass from Mike Phipps. Seconds later, fullback Perry Williams bangs 10 yards for the first score to put Purdue ahead six to nothing. Still in the first quarter, the Irish fight back. Terry Hanratty scrambles out of containment and goes 26 yards to the Purdue one yard line. Hanratty scored on the next play to give the Irish a seven to six lead. Purdue's second touchdown was set up on this 34-yard pass from Phipps to senior halfback Bob Hurst, which carried to the Notre Dame three. Later in the game, Phipps threw to flanker Leroy Keyes for 11 yards to give Purdue a 21-14 lead. Protecting a lead of 28-21, Purdue's defense put the pressure on Hanratty, and Leroy Keyes made the Boilermakers' fourth interception, ending all Irish hope and giving the game to Purdue by a 28-21 count. Purdue opened its Big Ten season at home against the Northwestern Wildcats. On the sideline, defensive halfback Dennis Serbies confers with coach Malenkoff and assistant coach Alan Hager as the Wildcats lead 13 to nothing. With just 53 seconds left in the first half, Mike Phipps throws a long pass downfield Leroy Keyes. Keyes bobbled the ball, then grabbed it and sprinted for the end zone for the first Purdue score. Purdue couldn't score in the third quarter, but in the fourth period, Phipps threw long again to Keyes, who made the catch for a 65-yard scoring play to bring the score to 16 to 12. In the fourth quarter, Phipps demonstrated his running ability as he picked up 17 yards to the Wildcat 28.
Six plays later, pips through to Bob Dillingham for 21 yards. The play going to the Northwestern four. Senior Bob Boltzell got the call and smashed the last four yards for the go-ahead score that made it 18 to 16 in Purdue's favor. Purdue's Mr. Everything, Leroy Keyes, came left on the option pattern and threw a pass to win Marion Griffin for a first down in the Wildcats' seven. Then Leroy chalked up the game's last touchdown, his third of the game, by scooting seven yards for the eighth straight Boilermaker win. 25 to 16 over Northwestern. On October 14th, Purdue visited Ohio State to play before a capacity crowd of 84,000 in Columbus. The day was wet and overcast with little wind blowing as Purdue started fast. Less than a minute after the opening kick, Ohio State's quarterback Gary Erson dropped back to pass. Purdue defender Dennis Serby stepped in front of the receiver to intercept and returned at 30 yards for the first Purdue score. Purdue added another first quarter score to lead 14 to nothing. In the second quarter, Mike Phipps threw to sophomore halfback Jim Kirkpatrick who made a beautiful catch on the Ohio State team. Two plays later, Phipps was forced to scramble, but spotted Marion Griffin in the end zone for a five-yard touchdown toss. Still in the second quarter, Phipps unlimbered his arm for another TD strike, hitting Jim Byrne for a 25-yard scoring play. Ohio State coach Woody Hayes said Purdue was the best team he'd seen in Ohio State Stadium. Leroy Keyes slashed for 21 yards in the second quarter to make a believer of Hayes and to give Purdue a 35 to nothing halftime lead. Phipps hit on nine straight passes in the game at one point, netting 210 aerial yards on 14 total completions and leading Purdue's rushing with 49 yards. On this play, Phipps gained 13 yards. Early in the fourth quarter, fullback Perry Williams bowled for a Purdue touchdown to make it 41 to nothing in favor of Purdue. Purdue's reserves then took over, and the final score was 41 to six, Purdue. Undefeated Purdue hosted Oregon State from the Pacific Eight the following week. The Beavers had just lost two games in a row. They came to Lafayette determined to whip the number two team in the nation. The Boilermakers spotted Oregon State a one touchdown lead in the first quarter, but came back to tie the game up at seven all on this 15 yard sweep by Leroy Keyes, still in the first quarter. Late in the second quarter, as Purdue tried to get better field position, Keyes got the ball again. Leroy picked up 14 yards, but a fumble three plays later gave the ball to the Beavers. Trailing 10 to 7 in the third quarter, quarterback Phipps passed to win Jim Byrne for a gain to the Oregon State 38. On the next play, Phipps handed off on the draw to Perry Williams, who gained 11 yards for a first down. Continuing the move, Purdue's fifth spot had burn open and hit him for a first down in the Oregon State seven yard line. On the next play, Keyes scored his 48th point of the season to move the Boilermakers into a 14 to 10 lead. Oregon State roared back to recapture the lead. And though Jim Burns set an all-time career record by catching his 114th pass, the Beavers dealt Purdue their first loss, 22 to 14. With a four and one record, the Purdue footballers entered their third Big Ten game at Iowa, determined to start a new win stream. Purdue scored first to lead seven to nothing at the end of the first quarter. 
The Boilermakers' second score came on the longest run from scrimmage in Purdue football history. Leroy Keyes started right, cut left, then right, and sprinted 81 yards for a 14-point Purdue lead. Iowa retaliated, but Perry Williams apparently stopped, spun out to his right, and ran 45 yards for Purdue's third score, making it 20 to 7 Purdue. In the second half, Mike Phipps, number one total offense leader for Purdue, found Leroy Keyes in the open and pegged him a 29-yard scoring pass. Again in the final quarter, Phipps threw to Keyes for a 35-yard gain to the Iowa five-yard line. Three plays later, Perry Williams racked up the 33rd Purdue point of the day with a dive into the end zone. The final score for Purdue came on another Phipps to Keyes aerial maneuver deep into Iowa territory. Keyes scored his fourth PD of the day as the Boilermakers won 41 to 22. Taking on their second Big Ten foe in two weeks away from home, Purdue traveled to Illinois on a cold, windy day. The Illini had been tough for the Boilermakers the past two years and started out that way again. However, Leroy Keyes helped Purdue dominate the game's last three quarters with a new single-game Purdue rushing record of 225 yards. On this first quarter play, Leroy carried for 64 yards. Second quarter, Keyes found another opening in the Illini defense and slipped through for 39 more yards. Here's Keyes again in the first half. This time his instinct and smooth moves help him gain 22 yards. In the second period, Leroy scored the first of his three touchdowns for the day on this 11-yard sprint. Keyes established the Purdue rushing record with carries like this one, which helped make him a solid candidate for the Heisman Trophy, which has been won only three times by a junior. Keyes, a great three-way threat, threw his fourth Purdue touchdown pass to favorite target Jim Byrne. Play was good for 13 yards. Late in the game, Mike Phipps chalked up his first touchdown of the season on this 11-yard run. Final score, Purdue 42, Illinois 9. Purdue's next foe at ross Aid Stadium was the Minnesota Gophers, who were in a three-way tie with Purdue and Indiana for the Big Ten lead. The new Boilermaker basketball arena furnishes the backdrop as Purdue comes on the field on a cold, rainy day. The Boilermakers moved into a 14-10 second quarter lead over Minnesota with this come-from-behind end run by Leroy Keyes. Mike Phipps, who picked up 235 yards in passing against the Gophers, hit Marion Griffin with a pass. The Griff ran for a 38-yard gain. Two plays later, Phipps threw his 10th touchdown pass of the year to Jim Byrne. Byrne's score makes his point total for a career and even 100. The Boilermakers were ahead and driving for their fourth score when Perry Williams made this power run in the third period. The drive to the fifth Purdue touchdown was keyed by Phipps, who threw to the far sideline where Jim Byrne gathered it in before being knocked down out of bounds.
Leroy Keyes established a new Big Ten scoring record of 14 touchdowns and 84 points as he carried for eight yards on the fifth Purdue touchdown. With the reserve offensive unit in the game, Purdue quarterback Don Kiepert is forced to scramble before spotting in Bill Liber open. Liber made the catch and jars into the end zone to make the final score 41 for Purdue and 12 for Minnesota. Last year, the Michigan State Spartans beat the Purdue Boilermakers in East Lansing, but this year, Purdue, driving toward the Big Ten title, was out to waylay the Michigan Staters in Ross Age Stadium. Purdue carried a 7-1 record into the game. Purdue's All-American Leroy Keyes, who gained 193 yards rushing in this game, swept for 17 yards on this play to the MSU 40. Several plays later, Keyes altered his usual run-pass option a little, spotted Jim Byrne in the clear in the end zone, and threw a 12-yard scoring pass. In the first period, with Purdue leading 7-0, Tim Foley was back in single safety as Michigan State was forced to punt. Foley tucked the ball away on the Purdue 40 and made the longest punt return of the season to the MSU 35. On the third play of the following series, Mike Phipps fired a 20-yard scoring strike to the nation's leading scorer, Leroy Keyes. Carrying a 14 to nothing first quarter lead into the second period, Purdue's Perry Williams spurted into the end zone behind great blocking from eight yards out, putting Purdue ahead 21 to nothing. The Boilermakers couldn't score in the second half. And runs like this by Leroy Keyes gave Purdue a yardage total of 467 against the Spartans. In the fourth quarter, Leroy got away for one of the game's longest ground games as he dashed around the right side of the Spartan defense. The final score favored Purdue 21 to seven over Michigan State. In the old oaken bucket battle at Bloomington, Purdue won the coin toss and the Boilermaker seniors playing in their last game were introduced before the kickoff. Indiana scored first, taking a seven to nothing lead. The Boilermakers struck back on the ensuing kickoff with Perry Williams going 17 yards for a first down on the Purdue 32. Three plays later, Phipps threw a 20-yard pass to win Jim Byrne for another first down, this time in Indiana territory. Once more, Phipps looked for Byrne and found him with still another first down pass that Byrne carried to the IU 14-yard line. After Keyes carried to the nine, Williams blasted over right guard for the score that tied the game seven to seven. IU led at the half by a 19 to seven score. But late in the third quarter, Leroy Keyes, playing with a painful chest injury, carried for 13 yards to the IU 24. On the next play, All-American Leroy swept wide right to the IU two-yard line. Perry Williams scored the last Purdue touchdown over left guard as Indiana won the bucket battle 19 to 14.